Trick or treat, trick or treat, trick or treat for Halloween. Better give a treat that's good to eat if you want to keep life serene. Ooh, my hair is popping in this sunlight. <laughs> okay, hello darlings, it's Tess. Welcome back to another day of Vlogween. Um, I think I'm gonna spend today in between doing my tutoring students, um, which is what I mainly do to earn that money. Um, <laughs> um, money that I'm currently spending on Halloween, but like, who cares? I don't, bite me. Cringe culture is dead and I killed it. Um, <laughs> Um, I think I'm gonna keep uh, tweaking my decorations. I was doing some of that yesterday. Um, I now want to start working on the decorations that I have here in my room. You can see I'm in my room. Um, because my main decoration areas, if I haven't um, said them already, is I've got like a rainbow art magic altar in here. And then out in the living room, I've got a um, like purple vintage um, situation above the TV. I've got my Sarwin table. Did I just say that? I can't remember. Um, and then I'm gonna have some sort of Victorian apothecary um, decor at the end of the table where um, my fish currently is. So um, that's gonna be really fun, but I really need to um, get my act together with this art magic altar because like my old one is still up, the wall art is still there and I really need to switch it out. And um, there's like physically not enough room in here for me to like put it, to put you on a tripod and do like a really satisfying time lapse. So I'm gonna have to show it to you like as I go. So <laughs> let's just show you first. So this is the usual art magic altar over here. This is always there. Say hello guys. Everything says hello. Hello. The new new unicorn thing says hello. <laughs> but then over here this area is seasonal. So it's currently still got a few things of my harvest season abundance altar up there. So I need to take those down. Um, and then there are a couple of things here that I need to take down as well. But basically, the theme is is rainbow. As I said before, you can see by this rainbow unicorn he um, there that I'm going to be using. Um, I've got a couple of other rainbow things too. There's that. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. Sometimes setting up my altars takes um, ages and lots of like moving around. And then sometimes it's... Oh, that's a crash outside. <laughs> And sometimes it takes forever. So I've got this area pretty much clear. So now I'm gonna have room to actually be taking down these papers and I can make a little pile here. Oh, I just need to move, move the clint, hang on. <laughs> And then a few of the rainbow things that were there before I've now put over here just to make room so I can come back and get each thing and then take it to the corner once the art is up. I decided to use this rainbow cape as an altar cloth. I don't usually use altar cloths, but I just thought it was too cool to pass up. There is a little cat and rainbow bracelet friend on top of the lantern. There is our rainbow unicorn friend. Um, this Sonia Ayla's piece is up in the back and then I'm thinking of having the Art Magic Oracle deck up as well. I'm using my baking paper stuff um, that I got from T uh, TK Maxx, you guys have um, seen that in my haul. Um, I'm thinking of putting it in um, the section at the back there. Added that spider because it just wasn't busy enough for me I guess. Um, and then that's some um, little Molly Roberts rosette um, in the corner. So here's the stuff that I've been adding. Um, my kind of thing when I collage is that if I've got a bigger piece, such as this collage bit in the back by Sonia Ayler's, which is like an A4 page like that, um, I never want to have square edges if I can help it. Like they just look kind of weird and and just sort of I don't like them so um, I always try and make a frame of sort of things that are not straight like not geometric so that way it kind of 
I don't know, I'm just moving my hand like a weirdo right now, but like, it, that's just my style when it comes to putting stuff together. So, these things are really annoying me. I don't know what I'm going to have to do with them, but I'll have to put something on the corners and the things there, otherwise it'll just be two random pieces at the edges that are just going to annoy me. Um, but in terms of 3D stuff, I've got my lantern over there, which I'm obviously going to turn on, the goblet that I need to finish, uh, my rainbow unicorn, my rainbow tarot card with a skeleton hair clip. Oracle card, Tess. That's an oracle card. It's even from your favourite deck by Molly Roberts. Orange uh, sparkly pumpkin that I made, the bit of my feather headband to honour feathers just finding me constantly throughout this year and um, you know whether that can be a divinatory symbol or something like that. I just feel like I should acknowledge that. Um, when the veil is thinning for the witch's new year, like, you know, um, acknowledge a symbol that has been such a big part of my life for the past year. And then I am putting this in here, I a little bit because I don't know what to put here, but also because I intended this piece to kind of be like someone in the past, like it's, you know, this girl who um, has her record player and she's decorated it with all this stuff, so it's like, I don't know if the word ancestor is right when the person that you're referring to was a kid in the 60s and 70s and therefore is still alive, but if we're talking about like elders and people like that, so you know, maybe elders rather than ancestors, this is the kind of tribute that you might make. So. I don't know, like, I'm just kind of looking for things over here on the Art Magic Altar that make sense to put here, but like, it's just giving me a lot of trouble. And then, this obviously is an ancestor, because it's um, someone who lived in the past who I never met, and so to me that is an ancestor. This is a Molly Roberts artwork made out of a ball of foil and a plastic bottle. And I made it, why am I so out of breath? I'm standing still. Um, and I made it in a tribute to my mum's grandma, so my great grandma, Nana King. Her first name was Violet, and so that's why it's purple. Um, and we've got the flowers on it, like a flowery bathing cap. Um, and the rhinestones and some glittery decoration and stuff. So that was made deliberately as an ancestor statuary. So of course it's going to go on an altar for Sarwin when Sarwin is like dedicated to ancestors and people who've passed on. Okay, we have made progress. The goblet is now covered in the silver glitter undercoat. Um, the between the fingers is still drying with the glitter undercoat, so I'm definitely going to allow that to dry and then take off um, the excess with a cotton tip, the excess from between the fingers I mean, so they don't get sprayed on. And then what I'm working on now is the like glittery paper that I'm gonna use for the stars so whenever I do a rainbow I always go um, yellow, orange, red, pink, purple, blue, green so I'm gonna make like some stripes um, of this glittery paper and obviously I'm gonna give it a um, backing so that I'm not doing it just over white because otherwise that needs more layers so um, I've got these pens these are my mum's I can't find mine <laughs> um, so this is what I'm gonna be doing next the girls I think they like this group and they do love each other like sisters but you know it doesn't matter what I think they have to be great to prove to Abby Jane fits in let's start working towards nationals let's quit this I just went to put the first layer of gold glitter onto this paper on the yellow and when I tip the glitter off it has now become a person with a hand on their hip holding an electric guitar above their head. Hello. Alright, still glittering. Different strips are in different stages of drying 
but I was just at the point with this purple glitter where the strip was here as you can see and then as anyone knows who's done um, work with glitter you do it on a piece of paper so then you can pour it, fold like the paper in half and then pour it back down into the jar so you don't waste any. And so now my spray adhesive around the edge of the strip and then like on the rest of the page and then the glitter as it tr has traveled past it has now stuck to the uh, spray adhesive that was there. So now we've got a mushroom cloud. Cool. Before we had like a figure with an electric guitar, now we have a mushroom cloud. Or maybe it's a T for Tess. Whatever. Lol. Update. Punching out tiny sparkly stars is really time consuming. And I know that individually gluing them onto a silver sparkly goblet is going to be even more time consuming. So... Good thing I've got no more students and nowhere to be, because this is going to take a hot minute. Okay, so here is the result. Choppy chop, punch punch. You can see there we've got the purple, we've got the blue, we've got the turquoise, we've got the green. Then over here, orange, red, pink, gold, or yellow rather, because I'd call this kind of gold. That stuff's more yellow. Um, so, we are now ready to get the skewer and the Mod Podge and start adhering these tiny little bad boys to this less tiny bad boy. So, um, why do I do these things to myself? I don't know. Dicking around in my room doing DIY stuff is some of the times when I feel most happiest. So, I'm just going to keep doing it, you know, cheaper than therapy, cheaper than drugs. <laughs> Here we go. It's starting to happen. No idea if I will need more of these or not. Oh dear God, please let me not need more of them. <sighs> it's going to look so good when I'm finished though. All right, here we go. Progress, slowly but surely. Also, you may have noticed that there's kind of scribbles and stuff like that, like bits of writing on the back of my stars, even some like yellow highlighter in some places, like that, that bit here is blurry, but you can see the yellow. Um, that's because I like to use in my art magic practice, in my craft, in my anything, I will use recycled materials as much as possible. So this uh, paper had writing on the back um, and I literally fished it straight out of my mum's recycling bin. So if you are a collage artist, if you're making something out of paper, if something is going to be covered, like it's a backing sheet or you're going to put gl uh, glitter on it or paint it or whatever, use recycled materials. I am begging you. So more progress on the goblet. I decided to put um, the stars in between the fingers are my three favorite colors, pink um, or purple, pink and green. So I decided to put like um, dots kind of behind them um, in between the fingers to make it look like it was sort of coming out of the hands. But I'm applying the glue with the round end of this cocktail stick because it's basically the perfect size for the dot of glue that I need and I'm basically just gonna keep going round the cup for as many stars as I need because the front of how I want to display it is this one like obviously with the claw displayed as good as possible so really the whole front of it that I want is basically done but I'm just gonna keep going anyway and not waste these stars. It is 9.28 p.m. and the goblet is finally finished. Here it is. Here's the culprit. Witchy hand goblet but make it art magic. <laughs> Hashtag Tess Connellan aesthetic. 
Hey guys, you can see we're in a completely different setup and a completely different time of day, but I completely forgot to film an outro for this video um, after I'd finished the goblet, like I just kind of fell into bed. I didn't think of actually just putting the camera on and just saying goodnight to you guys. So that's what I'm gonna say today. I hope you enjoyed this vlog of the last couple of days. I hope it can inspire you to do some rainbow crafting, magic crafting, spooky crafting, whatever you want to do because we sure love all of those things around here. So if you want to stick around, click the like button and hit subscribe as well. I would absolutely love to have you in our little band of outsiders. And remember, I love you. Keep going.